<laughs> that is what I'm talking about. Uh, that is a piece of wall art. This was just supposed to be a test. It was just supposed to be an example to show you uh, one of our favorite paint techniques. What is up? A welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it, or make it? So do we. And we have a new video each week. So be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell for our new videos, and leave us a comment. And this week's video is brought to you by us. Be sure to go over and visit us at kngmakeit.com. And this week, we're doing our five favorite paint techniques. Yes, we recently had a comment on how we did one of the paint techniques on one of our door signs. So I thought this would be a great reference video to show you five paint techniques that every crafter needs to know. Paint technique number one. The fastest and the easiest is using the scraper tool. We love this one when we're doing uh, surfaces that are rough like this, rough, what is this? Fence picket. Thick, yes, a rough fence picket here. So it's already pre-stained and dried. This gives a good distressed look technique. Because it's I, got some wood grain to it. It's yeah. got some uneven surface. And all you have to do for this one is... Hold on, they're speedy. <laughs> no other cameras are on. <laughs> You're just feeling it. Tanner, don't stop the cameras now. We can't. She's already started. I'm just going to start recording now. All right, Speedy McGee already started. <laughs> cameras are on we now. We can do it again. We I'll should just be show. good. I'll just All right, show. fake it. Be looking go ahead, give it a good fake, Kim. Give me a fake, good fake pour. All right, go ahead. All right. Was it convincing? This is super easy. It, nothing too hard. Okay, cameras are rolling. You're good now. <laughs> so we're just gonna use this is a what is this an eight inch, six inch, six inch, that's a six, six inch in little metal scraper here. Well, unless you're a guy, then yes, that's an eight inch. Oh, Garrett. <laughs> so here I'm just gonna apply my paint directly to the surface, and we're just gonna pull. We lay it right before it and pull, and it's gonna spread. And that's okay, you can kind of come back, that's on your um, scraper there, you can come back and continue to spread that out. Ready get this? Yep. Always. Just like icing a cake, really. Yeah, pretty much, yeah, like icing a cake. It's fun. And I like that distressed, like, barnwood look, look that it leaves on the picket. I do too. I, I like that uh, if the harder you push, the less you leave. So I tend to go really rough with it. Yeah. Do you want to give it a try? Give sure. your own scrape? I'll get my scraping on. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah. There you go. See? Minutes, super easy. If you followed our channel for a while, you've seen us use this on porch leaners. We've done a couple of spring leaners where I wanted to keep it white but keep that distressed look. So we've used this technique on the leaners. We also used this technique when we did our craft booth set up for Christmas. We actually did this on oh, right. yeah. lots of shiplap pieces to kind of outline and give that rustic look to our craft show booth set up when we did it at Christmas time. My favorite place that we used it though is in our front room, our workshop area on that farmhouse wall. Yeah, that's, I'll leave a link to that video. That was a huge right video. Here. That yeah. was a great one. I liked, I love that look. So the second example of our scraping technique, we did it on the fence picket now we're going to do it on a smooth surface so this has been painted just a blackboard painted with same exterior house paint and now we're going to add a little of the white paint i say just a little line at the top yep. and scrape it down just a piece of mdf nothing up this sleeve nothing up this sleeve <laughs> action Woo, that's Woo. a lot i did i went in a little deep a little deep it's okay they make paper towels. I'm gonna catch it at the end. Look 
Looking good. Hmm. Oh, now I'm messing it up. Perfect. There you go. That one's quick and easy too. Yeah, it's so quick. And I think it actually makes it, gives it that little uh, wood, wood grain, grain effect. Ah, Jinx, you owe me a Coke. <laughs> Paint technique number two. We're going to get slick with this one and use some wax to do chippy paint. Yes, this was a technique that Garrett showed me from his art days. I actually saw something that I wanted to replicate and I said, how do we do that? And he was like, mm, I can show you how to do that. Yeah, you got me a lip balm. Yeah, we, yeah, we... If you watched one of our Tuesday lives not too long ago, we did this and I didn't know, I didn't think to use the wax or think about the fact that we had a can of clear wax. Uh, and Garrett says, well, do you have any chapstick? It'll work just as well. Yeah. So. <laughs> when in doubt, chapstick it out. So this one's another easy one. It's just a couple of steps. You're going to want to start with a painted or stained surface. This one's painted because we're trying to keep all the techniques uh, kind of similar with the same starting surface. So this is just black on some MDF. We're going to use some of this chalk paint wax and a little spatula. Just give a little scoop. Just going to put it in places. We'll rub it around this board a little bit. Yeah, just random places, random thicknesses. Yep. Again. So that you'll get anywhere that the wax is placed, then the paint over top will not stick to your piece, and then that's what it'll show. The thicker your wax is, though, the easier it's going to be to rub off after it's painted. Oh, getting, Ooh, getting fancy getting with fancy it. Getting fancy over here. And any clear wax will do. There's like Minwax brand. I happen to have this high-end Annie Sloan wax here, uh, but you don't you don't need to have special chalk wax or anything like that. Then we're just going to use our regular outdoor paint acrylic that we always use. Any of the different paints will work. Acrylic, latex. This is a latex acrylic because it's outdoor paint, or uh, your chalk paints. Any of them will work. Yeah, this will. I think this will work with pretty much any paint. I think it even works with spray paint. I am pretty sure it even works with spray paint. I probably need more paint on the roller. Now, this was asked during, we used this technique during one of our workshops uh, recently, and uh, I thought she had a great question. She said, is this going to mess up the roller if I roll right over the wax? And it doesn't. I've been able to reuse the rollers and I haven't had any issues. It the mean, wax really doesn't stick. Yeah, you don't just, you don't push down. If you mash it, I'm sure you'll get wax on your roller, but just roll it like a normal person and you'll be fine. Like a normal person. <laughs> just have a light hand. You just want to roll over it and then after you go to your second coat, like for this we're going to need a couple of coats of white probably to really... Uh, Will we? Yes, I, I don't want to see the black through the white paint coats and that's how I did our backers for our signs. A couple of coats of white uh, and then that second coat, you can add a little more, um, a little more pressure because it already has the wax already has one coat of paint over it. Thin coats of paint are better than one thick coat of paint. I feel like you're staring at me. <laughs> well, Garrett keeps thinking if I just make it perfect the first time, it'll definitely then dry. She won't like make that. me do it a second time. <laughs> So I did use the hair dryer, but I used it on cool. He's no heat. to melt the wax. I didn't want to melt any wax and make <laughs> it look schmelty instead of chippy. Now we're just going to use some paper towel and a little bit of elbow grease. Uh, let me get this camera. Yeah. Hold on, because I want to show... How easy it rubs away? Well, yes, and I want to show that you can kind of see how easy where the away. wax was so it's easy to find it and wipe it away.
the chip, the chippy paint. It's less of a chip and more of a wipe. But it looks pretty cool. See, I can get some slashes in there. This is where I rub my finger back down and I remove the wax. So. And that's why I think by doing this with a, so this is a painted back or a painted base, but if you did this with a stained base, it will look like essentially an old piece of furniture that was painted over and then chipped off out over time. Yeah, when that's you go to paint it, put it on the corners and some of the areas that looks like where it would rub through. Yeah, where it would get the most wear, mm -hmm. you want to do the chipping. So for this, it just kind of looks like we've done a Dalmatian board, <laughs> but it sh really showcases the technique. Yep, we just have to do 100 more. <laughs> Did you know you could get all of our files, behind the scene content, and even a Kim and Garrett After Dark podcast? As well as monthly Zoom calls, access to a secret Facebook group, and we'll even send you one of these fancy t-shirts, all for $20 a month. It's the best way to support this channel. So join us over at Patreon.com. Paint technique number three in 3D. We're going to use some plaster of Paris and make this board pop. We're going to use a little bit of this plaster of Paris two to one in paint, stir it up, get it nice and thick, and then we'll scrape it across this, uh, this stencil. Yeah, this is just a little vinyl stencil, reusable. Ooh. So two. Two to one. All right, that's, oh All my right, gosh. That's two. That's, Shh. that's two. Okay. Right, right, looks about two. Where's my, let me get, let me get my camera out. Mm -mm. There's your two. This two. Little hill. Mm -hmm. Two. One, right? Yes. That one. It's very light and fluffy. It's almost like I'm making pancakes. No, I don't make pancakes on a plate, I guess. Ooh, maybe I needed more, more paint. Yeah, maybe you need more water. There you go. That's a good one. What would you say that's the consistency of cake batter? Like, I'm gonna say 10 minute old oatmeal. Yeah, probably like cake batter. Maybe a little thicker than cake batter. See how it's sticking to the plate? Mm hmm. Alright, I think we're good. We're nice and ready. Mm -hmm. I'll put some. Wait. I'm gonna add some to the. Uh, to the stencils now. Oop, don't move. Add it to the stencil. Somewhere you get some. You get some. Very professional. Yep, you're getting some. You get some more. It's dripping off your plate over there. All right, now I'm going to scrape it. Leave it in the holes. Yeah, you want this no more than like an eighth, eighth inch thick. No, not scrapey. We want to leave a little texture. So you want it about an eighth of an inch. Yeah. You don't want to actually see the design. I think your other little spatula might be better. I uh -huh. I think that's okay, right? Okay.
nice and good, nice and even. Mm -hmm. All right, now while it's still wet, we're just gonna lift up the stencil, try to pick it straight up, don't get slidey. Bam. Ooh, she's thick. Yeah, she is. Bam, look at that. Very cool, very cool. That's only part one. All right, now we're gonna let this dry for about 20 minutes. 20 minutes later. Now that it's all dried and textured, it's looking pretty cool. It already looks cool. Like, I think the shadows and stuff that it creates, you could probably leave it here. But we're gonna come in with a little bit of makeup sponge, a very dry makeup sponge, and just try to catch the raised edges. So you can also mix this the traditional way, which is two parts uh, plaster of Paris, two parts powder, and one part water. And the other way is you can, once it dries, come back with a wet sponge and even out the depth of the texture. So we've left ours with multiple depths um, just to give it a different look, but you can kind of knock that down with a little wet sponge and give it another like flat more more flat design look Right, to give it a little bit more effect, we're just going to use some paper towel. We're going to crumple it up, try to make a flat, crumply area up at the, up at the front. Just get a nice, uneven surface at the, the front of my paper towel, whatever the front is. We're going to dip it in the paint. We're going to dab it off until it's pretty dry. Once it's dry and gives me a nice, uneven little dab, I'm then going to take it to the black and try to dab it all over the place. Make it look a little vintage. What do you think? What do I think? I think, wow, I think that is what I'm talking about. Uh, that is a piece of wall art. This was just supposed to be a test. It was just supposed to be an example to show you uh, one of our favorite paint techniques, but uh, I think we just pulled off a piece of wall art. What do you think? Right, pretty cool. It gives it a lot of dimension, makes it look vintage, makes it look worn. A lot of texture. A lot of texture. This, we do something like this when we redo a piece of furniture. If you put a little accent in a corner or along the top in the edge somewhere, again, you use that plaster of Paris, mix it with some paint, throw it up on there. It, this works a little bit better with chalk paint because you can round those edges. Yeah. But, uh, well, if you, yeah, if you just mix the plaster of Paris with water, once it's dry, you can flatten this thing out some. Uh, and give it like just a slight raised look to yeah, it. Yeah, slight raised, but I like the ridges and everything in here. I think this is a piece of wall art. Man, <laughs> it's art. That is a good one. Paint technique number four. It's the fastest dry brush. Fastest hand in the West. <laughs> I live in the East. Uh, if you've ever watched our uh, dry brush Merry Christmas vertical porch leaner. Yeah. <laughs> 
was not we, sped up. We used, yes, he already knows my favorite line. We used this technique in that porch leaner, and it was one of the funniest lines. I have never forgotten it, and I say it all the time. This is not sped up. You cannot stop it. We'll do the same thing here. We'll do it real time. <laughs> We're going to go real time for you. Need a little bit of paint, just a tiny little squeeze. And then I'm going to just dip the ends of the bristles in. Hold on, let me get you doing that. Just a little bit of paint on the bristles. Just a little bit of paint on the bristles. And now here we're going to sacrifice our craft table. I'm going to brush it off a little bit. Then we're going to come in very light hand and just kind of drag it across. That's it. Dry brush method. I like it though. I mean, look at it. Whoops, it looks cool. Little, nope, that's good. Got a little heavy there. That's all right. Now here's where it starts to get fast. The less paint you have on your brush, the faster you get. That's how it goes. Oh, I'm out. All right, we think need some more. Yes. From this view, this is like a dark section. Just like sweeping. It's still, yeah, right in there. I was gonna say, right in here, it still looks dark. I don't know why you're scared of that section. I gotta stay away from the middle. Yeah, now you're filling it in. Now I'm cooking with gas. Or something like that. Kerosene, propane, and propane products. Yeah, liking it now. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Get these ends a little bit. Yeah. Should I go deeper? Or do you think that's a good representation of dry brush? Well, look here, what do you think? On there, it just I looks so much look different good. than when you look in person. I think it, yeah, I mean, I think this is great. I mean, I think this is the fast, it's easy good. way Board to just give a little bit of interest. Yeah. Well, this looks super cool over stain. I mean, when we do the backers and you do the dry brush over them, looks super cool. Gives it, uh, it like a feel of depth but well I think if you were to um, put some like aquarium or an aqua color right here a teal mm -hmm. on top of this yeah you can layer dry brush very easily again this dries almost instantly yeah you can with add the dry brush yes, so you, you can, can immediately come in with another color give it a dry brush and remember it's just paint you can always paint over paint well and what I'm saying what I meant to, to say was that you could paint some like a word um, in in a like a, a, a teal color and have it pop on there oh, yeah, against yeah. this background. Still get it to pop. But yes, I think that was a good call out though that you can mix colors. You can add multiple colors in here, a teal or a red or mm -hmm. something, and give it a whole different look. A little bit of teal, a little bit of orange. Maybe it'll look a little bit rusty. Yeah. This is uh this is one of my favorites right here. He said that after every technique. <laughs> Paint technique number five. 
This is a sticky one. We're gonna use some glue to make some crackle paint. Super easy, super fast. Did I say that about every one of them so far? <laughs> we just used this recently, probably in December. Is that when we did that? In December, I, I think. think. So. I mean, it was we did uh, chess pieces on canvas. So I was trying to show how you can use that mixed media by adding the wood pieces to a canvas, and we use this paint technique. So I wanted to showcase it here because I think the look is really cool and you can add that to a piece of furniture. You can crackle finish furniture. You can crackle finish a door round or um, any kind of wall art. <laughs> Anything that you want to paint. <laughs> we just squeeze some Elmer's glue onto the board and now I'm gonna brush it around. The thicker the glue, the more crackle or the bigger cracks they'll be. So if I come in with just the some white glue, we'll do white glue up top or on this side and we'll bring it into a darker glue on the bottom. Give you that transition feel. Put some down here. Cross hatch it. The glue will separate and crackle with the finish of the brush. Yeah. So whatever way the brush or the strokes are facing, that's how it will crackle. So we'll give it a crackle this way. So we'll go and do a horizontal crackle. Mm -hmm. Do you need more glue? Nope, that is plenty. Plenty of glue. Now you don't even have to let this dry. We're going to go right in with some white paint. Where am I? Where did I put my roller? Oh, oh my I put it away. <laughs> That's what I do. That's what you do. Blink and I mean, I'll put it I mean, if I put away. it down, once my hand leaves it, Kim's going to put it away. It's true. Now this, you want a liberal amount of paint on your roller. You don't want it to get in the glue. You want it to ride on top of the glue. Now, is this better rolled or brushed? Uh, I like to roll it better. I believe it's easier to keep it on top of the glue and not get the glue all up in my paintbrush with the paint. Now this will naturally crack as it dries, Yep. but even more so if you add a little heat. Yeah, the quicker it goes, the more cracks you'll get. So we're going to really speed it up with the hair dryer. All right, this one right here, this one right here is my favorite one. <laughs> I think it's the fastest and it's the most artistic with the speed. I think it's pretty cool. I mean, you could use this on anything. Right, Piece of furniture. Can, yep, door rounds, door rounds, furniture, wall. You can use it on even canvas because that's what we used it on was canvas and it worked beautifully on the canvas. I think this would look really cool as a door, like for a door put like a, a poppy color behind there, like a red, and then like another, I guess, white over top of it and do it. I think that would make like a cool front door. Yeah, this, yeah. this looks good with very contrasting colors, front, the base coat, the top coat, um, a really cool red as a base coat, and then the yellow crackle on top uh, of it yeah. looks really cool together. Mm -hmm. I think any contrasting colors would look very cool in this kind of method. Again, we did black and white because at the end I want to show you all of them together really up close. 
how cool they all are. Yeah. I think this one's my favorite, for real. Leave us a comment down below about what your favorite paint technique is. And we are about out of time. So if you're not going to join us for our patron after show or this week's Test Cut Tuesday, we will see you next Friday where we'll do it, build it, and make it again. How many do you think I can balance at one time? Think I could do two at a time? Like together or one in each hand? Ooh, they're different sized boards. Ooh, this is going to be tricky. Yeah, that was too tricky.